One of the goals I eventually wanted to accomplish through Hip to the Games was to bring artists on the show that were not just dope rappers, but basketball fans as well. Now, of course, I have my dream guest list full of some of the greatest artists and basketball players who I know are hip to the games, but I also knew it would be a disservice if I didn't show love to and share the stories of upcoming and or underground artists as well. Uh, I've been blessed with the vision to create this platform, so I want to and understand that it's my duty to use it to be a blessing to others. And as you know, the way I do it on here is by appreciating and understanding the stories behind the creative brilliance that MCs possess. And today I'm excited to be joined by an artist who you may remember uh, from his previous appearance on Hip to the Games as his latest self-proclaimed classic, Concords, drops today. Welcome, Baltimore's own. You'll never know. Back to H2DG in an episode that will serve as a nice appetizer before we bump his newest release. Welcome to episode 81 of Hip to the Games. And I am privileged to be joined by You'll Never Know, uh, his second appearance on the podcast. Never, man. It's great to have you back representing that H2DG lifestyle to the fullest with yet another Hoops Influence project dropping this yeah. week. Uh, well, actually, I should say dropping today, right? We got to, at the time of this record, we got to right. gotta <laughs> act like it dropped already. But uh, right, right, right. Uh, either way, you know, as heard in the intro, I'm just definitely excited to lace up Concords, if you will, you know? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Concords, yo. Uh, yeah, yo, uh, definitely. I, I felt I felt like it was right to just reach out to you personally, you know what I'm saying? Just because I know, you know, what your podcast entails. So I was like, yo, it's, it's only right for, you know, to reach out to the homie Dez to, you know, talk about this project, yo. Like, like you were the one of the first platforms I reached out to uh, in regards to, you know, just explaining, you know, the origin story of this project, man. It's the significance of it, man. I'm really excited uh, for the release of it. Uh, we've been working on this joint for three years, so... Yeah, <laughs> I'm really amped up, yo. I appreciate that, man. That, that's what's up. That means a lot. Welcome to Hip to the Games, the podcast for you, the basketball junkie and the hip hop head. I'm your host, Desmond, and I too have had hoop dreams and enjoy the beautiful genre of hip hop and its history. Together, we will enjoy some of the greatest albums, songs, artists, players, moments, teams, and so much more, while even mixing the two on occasion, all in my hope that you remember why you love both or either of these to begin with. You'll soon understand that Hip to the Games is more than just a podcast. It's a lifestyle. And if you were looking for a platform that combines both basketball and hip hop, you've come to the right place. Now, because it's been a minute since you were last here, Neva, you know, uh, in fact, that episode dropped, it was uh, November of 2021. And, Dang. you know, now, right, right, right. Like, now you're wow. a married man now, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, big congratulations yo. on that. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, and, and just being an artist that continues to perfect their craft and and book those live performances, you know, just make those positive strides musically. Um, And with today's release coming during the earlier part of the new year still, um, you know, you, you seem like you're ready to start this year off with a bang with this album. And I just want to open up by asking you, you know, how would you kind of assess your growth, you know, maybe since that last time you were on Hip to the Games, uh, you know, maybe a couple years ago compared to where you are right now? Um, Because that I think when I was on uh, this podcast show, I think Baby Jordan yeah. came out. Yeah, yeah, that's what we was talking about, baby Jordan. And it's crazy. Like, you see how, like, everything is coming in full circle. We were talking about baby Jordan, and now we're doing a project, you know what I'm saying, where I'm paying homage to a classic Jordan sneaker. Right. You know what I'm saying? Concord, yo. So that wasn't intentional, by the way. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> right. it wasn't intentional. It was just how <laughs> the universe works sometimes. Uh, but I would say that uh, the growth has been... Uh, I was in that I was in that place where I was just trying to just dump, like just trying to put out as much music as possible. You get what I'm saying? Like I was I was in that in that mind state of like, well, um, if if you want to get this buzz or you want to be, you know, if you don't want your name to be flooded with, you know, a hundred other 
rappers is trying to get their name out there too. Why don't you just keep going, you know, keep pushing, you know, just keep dropping joints, yo. And that's mm -hmm. what, where my mind frame was at. So I take it from there to now. Um, I say I took my time with, um, you know, releasing this project. I mean, since then, you know, I released uh, The Ghost of Reggie Lewis. And uh, but each project from shout then, the I Ghost just ready, Lewis. Yeah, shout out to Ghost <laughs> Reggie Lewis, man. Um, yeah, but I feel like I, I I took my time with releasing each project, yo, because I'm a, I'm a '90s cat, yo. I'm from the '90s. I was raised in the '90s, yo, and from that era of just working the album and putting it out, like you see the rollout, like you know, what I'm saying, just constantly giving viewers and listeners something whether it be visuals whether it be a single you know that to, to push to the djs or whatever or what may case it be may be but um i just want to work an album man and i feel like with this project concords you know what i mean me and logic we really took our time as actually presenting a good piece of body of work that you know hip-hop lovers and basketball heads that's from the era of the 90s will really appreciate yo so that's why I could say sure. that the big difference is, man. Like I just, I mean, I'm getting older now too, yo. Like I, I got, I, you know, I got a wife. You know, what I'm saying I got a career outside of music that, you know, that sometimes I may not have a lot of time to focus on. You know, I always still manage to put my focus in music. That's always gonna be number one. But I'm just noticing as I'm getting older and and growth, I may not be able to you know, dedicate a lot of my time into putting out music and being in the lab constantly, constantly, constantly. Like these other cats is doing, you know, big up to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If cats got the resources to constantly, you know, put out music, you're putting out eight albums a year, that's dope. That's right. dope. But me personally, like, I, I like to try to balance out, you know, family life and real, like, you know, reality and just putting out music. Because me personally, I feel like, yo, I got to live I have to actually like live just so I could be able to put out some material, put out some content. I'm just not rapping just to be rapping. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I like to go through life things. I like to travel, I like to see things, I like to go through life experiences. And that's where those ideas and stuff comes to, comes to life when I'm putting out a project. Yo, so. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I appreciate you saying that never because two things stand out as you said that uh, the first thing uh, was that last part, right? Like, Again, it's funny, you, you growing up, we always heard like you got to keep it real in hip hop. Right. And I think that's right. also an example of that. Right. It's beyond music. Like and especially as 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 platforms like mine, like we try to shed light on up and coming artists, underground artists, because it's right. like there's a whole real life outside of this. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people have families, people have real, you know, they have their nine to fives outside of music. You know, it's coming yeah. home right after work, writing rhymes, getting in the studio, stuff like that. So I really appreciate you shedding light on that because people tend to forget that part of it. It's kind of like what they yeah. tell athletes, you know, you forget that they're human. Like sometimes at the end of the day, they had a bad game, not because they are, they're they're declining. They had a bad game because maybe they life just is just happening. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. <laughs> and that's just that's just, just that's just also with life. Period. Whether it be uh, you playing ball or you just doing anything in, in life, you know what I'm saying? Like not to like drift off on the subject, but just to piggyback off of that, you know, for example, with marriage, you may have a day where it's awesome. You know what I'm saying? They may have a day that's like a, a basketball game. Ah, oh, dang, it's a bad day. I had a bad day. You know what I mean? It happens, yo. It's just it, it's just human nature, yo. You know what I mean? And people don't talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to talk about talk about all right, the main thing, but people don't want to talk about the origin story or the behind the scenes aspect, yo. Right, right, yeah. And then the other part you mentioned was like. You said that back then, like a couple of years ago, you were just trying to dunk. And I, I immediately thought of like guys like D Rose and, and Russell Westbrook, where it was like those early stages in their youth, you know, even D Rose to this day is like, yo, I played reckless back then. Like I was so free of mind that, and, and I knew that 
I was more athletic. I was more stronger than anybody else. I could basically do whatever I wanted. Then he got the injuries and then he learned how to control his game. Same thing with Russell Westbrook. Everybody used to talk about, oh, he's playing too fast. He's going 100 he's miles per too hour. Wild. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. But, and then eventually he he got into the post game. He got into a little more of the mid range and he started slowing down a little bit. Uh, and I think, is that fair to kind of make that comparison where you're at? No, that's that's. Perfect. That's a perfect analogy, yo. Like that's a perfect analogy because, uh, you know, in the in the beginning. But mind you, you know, I've been doing this for for a minute for quite some time, yo. Mm -hmm. And you're always trying to um, fill the pockets. Like you're always trying to figure it out. And still, as an MC, you know, at the age I am, I'll be 38 this year. I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, mm -hmm. and you're always looking at your competition you're always seeing because it's in your face social media and all that like even though their music is dope i still look at them as my competition you know what i'm saying that's mm -hmm. just the competitive nature of an mc rightfully and so. uh when you see those guys and you see them like dropping like eight projects a year you're like saying to yourself like what well, damn like where do they have, where do they have the time to, <laughs> to like for real you drop dropping eight projects and it's not and it's not like whack, whack joints, yo. Like these dudes is actually putting out, they're not doing like EPs, they're dropping joints. It's like, like 11 records on there. And it's <laughs> like, yo, you like, where do you find the time? And it's just like, everybody works differently, man. And yeah. um, I'm just so on the aspect of just uh, putting out a good uh, quality record. Like my limit is two, pro if I could do, if I could drop two projects a year, I'm satisfied with that. Like I, I'm satisfied with that because the way my mind thinks, I'm always wondering, like, okay, yo, all right, after the project comes out, all right, you gotta get the, the single. What, what, what singles you gonna push? What visuals right. you gonna push? How you gonna push that? And, and you gotta actually push the records, like, especially if you ain't got a PR team or uh, you know, what I'm saying a machine. You That's actually true. gotta do the work and push it, yo. So that cast, that absolute cast, that like, can, you know, could drop. You know what I'm saying? Eight projects. And sometimes their work speaks for themselves. Like when they drop a project, Cash Low is, is coming out, you know, they let their projects do the talking, which is a beautiful thing. But mm -hmm. speaking for those that's, that actually don't have a team, we don't actually have a machine, it's, or it's all, you know, off. You you're you make the project. You know what I'm saying? When you don't have management and all that extra stuff, you determine the outcome of your project. That's why mm -hmm. I've learned the, the more you push a project, the more hands is, or the ears is going to pay attention to it. You know what I mean? And sometimes, and let me tell you that I've, I've spent out countless nights sending out emails. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, I imagine. Just, 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 just gathering information, man. And that's another thing that people don't talk about either. Yo, um, they don't talk about that aspect of, of the behind the scenes when you work the project. After you drop the project, you still got to work it. You still, especially if you ain't got no team with you, you're still pushing it yourself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like everything that I've done with Magnetic is is all under, it's all in the one hub. Once we, we re mix the record, we master it, we check it out, we do our press releases. We're, 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 we're just one, you know what I'm saying, machine that, and it works, you know what I'm saying? And I, I'm still just trying to figure out um, certain things as far as like that, you know, getting on certain platforms that you may need a publicist, but we all have the funds for that. You know, I I, I start to understand that there's certain platforms that you want to be in as far as like a double XL or a pitchfork or whatever. You may right. have to have those funds to pay a PR to to get you know even a look to, or even to get your your music heard or get a post, yo. So it's just little nitpicks that people don't really say. And it, it is cool too, but I look at it like I've developed enough uh, listeners, enough followers to, you know, to support the music whenever I do drop. I do appreciate those that, that, that take heed as anticipating it and, you know, they put it out the way they wanted to put it out. So I'm grateful for them. Yeah, man. I, I think it's one of those things like, you you start to appreciate it. Like I know there's a lot of hard days with that too, because I, I can relate like myself. And it, it's it's like a kind of like a healthy balance. Like there are those days when you like just like, man, like how are people doing it? But then on right. the other side, it's like, dang, this is what they mean when they say like the journey is the is the destination. 
right? Like yeah. you get so focused sometimes on where you want to be, but then you realize like, dang, like I'm really doing this thing. Like, like right, I should, you right. know, I should give myself some props for that. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah, I'm thankful absolutely. to be able to do this. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And to speak on that, yo, you know, the whole situation that happened with Hot 97, like yeah. with the real late joint, that's a perfect example. You know what I'm saying? For so long, I was thinking like, dang, man, I'm sending my joints everywhere, yo. Like the, the, the top platforms, you name it, I've I've sent it to them. And you look at other cats that's getting looks, you be like, man, I'm, I know I'm nice in this cat. Like, I, I, <laughs> you can't rap better than me. But how does he get that look? You know, but we may not know what type of relationship or connection he has. And that's why I learned like when um I got the Hot 97 look, yo, it was just matter of uh connections and consistency and just you know being a genuine good dude yo and putting out good music yo and um you know just getting that response and just getting peter rosenberg to actually support me and logic's record yo that was that was everything man and it was just that once we found out that we got on that platform like that was a, a huge win for the both of us yo because I know cats that's nice, that's on the same level of, of penmanship as me, that uh -huh. don't, will never get that opportunity to get on real late. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, if you, you got it, you got it, yo. The, if the music is dope, the music is dope, man. And that's that's why I tell people, always continue to push your pen, too, because you, you never know um, what may happen after that, as long as you keep working, man. Yeah, for sure. I definitely want to get into the uh, Hot 97 thing as well, because, you know, I'm glad right. you mentioned that, because that was very, very dope. Um, but we'll get to that later. But I did want to ask, you know, never. And this is something I felt like, you know, it was one of those things when I walked away from our first uh, interview. I was like, man, I should have asked them that. But uh, <laughs> uh, now I was like, you know, with this being your second appearance on Hip to the Games, like I want to get your thoughts on this. You know, we know your love for 90s hoops. We 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 know your passion for lyrics and your uniqueness and, and mastery of the craft. Uh, but how are your albums bigger than just a tribute to Harold Miner, right? Uh, uh, bigger than tributes to Bobby Knight, Rasheed Wallace, Reggie Lewis, right? And now, like, we got one of the most iconic sneakers ever, you know, with, with Concords. Like, how how can you take us beyond the surface and then detail those deeper meanings and motives that go into these projects, right? Like, how do you, how do you let people behind that curtain? That's a, that's a great question, man. Honestly, man, um, every project that, where I, I do is is always layered. Like I always try to focus on uh number one, paying homage to the, you know whoever I'm paying homage to for this record, right? Mm -hmm. And then number two, the layers. You know what I'm saying? Like every project, I, I want you to, you know, peel back the layers. I want you to, it's it's not a one-shot listen record. You know what I mean? I want you, I, I write in your windows, I write certain techniques the way I write. I want you to go back and replay it again. You know what I mean? And like that, that that's the thing I, I I really focus on. But um, but more like more importantly, it's just paying homage to, you know, the the con every record I do is is a concept, you know, of of me paying homage to uh 90s basketball, man, and just and just the biggest influence. I know I mentioned uh a couple of weeks ago on uh Grails Inc., man. Um I'm just letting them know that I look at like my audio as like an and one mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Like I look at the like I'm just taking you, the listener, through a visual, like through audio. You know what I'm saying? If that makes any sense, you know, um, going to Concord, a, mi a mixtape within the mixtape, if you will. Yeah, mixtape within yeah. within the mixtape, right? Yeah. And uh, with with Concords, but everything is this is stuff that I grew up on. You know what I'm saying? It's not like this is something that I, you know, this is an idea that I just, you know, I just con concocted with just on the spot. But no, this is where I wanted to put th these th these albums out in music, yo. I wanted to put something out that was near and dear to my heart. And I wanted to share with the listeners how I felt when I was growing up watching Harold Minor or, you know, hearing, watching highlights of uh, Reggie Lewis and uh, seeing a friend of mine who was in fifth grade and he had a pair of the Jordan Carolina blues and I ain't have a pair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like those type of, like every, every project that I do is connected to my childhood. You know what I'm saying? Growing up. And now as a, as, as an adult, 
I actually have more appreciation for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and it was it was something that I was like actually just trying to figure out for so long because everybody raps, right? Everybody raps. So my yeah. main my main thing was like, what what can I do to stand out from the next? And um, yeah, you you'll see some people that's like now they starting to catch on. You'll see some cats that are using basketball references um, yeah. within a joint show. And <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, and honestly, I'm not a hater. I'm not going to sit there and say, yo, I'm the first person that, that did this, you know, but right, I right. see it. I see it. If anybody want to speak on, from my behalf to be like, yo, never was doing it. That's cool. But I understand that rappers are not checking for other rappers. You know, I had to get it. I had to get in that mindset. I had to get that mind frame too, yo. Like everybody is. Everybody Everybody got that tunnel vision. Everybody got that tunnel vision, and everybody has an idea. And some people they have the same similar idea, you know. And and that's That's okay. It's not. It don't mean that yo yo you're biting or whatever. But just know that. And I had to learn that too, because at first I was like, man, like people will bring up stuff. They show me stuff of like such and such artists. They got a basketball reference or their cover is like basketball related. You know, like, yo, yo, I get that constantly. Like people will tag me and send <laughs> it to me. And I'm like, yo, are you trying to, are you doing this to make, try and make me upset? And at first I used to be like, man, these cats is biting. They need to come up with their own style. But <laughs> then I, I, I get it because they, they probably never heard of me. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they yeah. probably never heard of me. And it's just there for some way that feeling, that moment of how they presented the project or what they felt when they wanted to do that, that's how they felt. You know what I'm saying? So I, I had to like kind of tone back the the little, you know, getting not getting upset, but like, yo, these dads, these cats is biting any decor with their it's own the, style. It's the competitor, you know, it's, yeah, it's the competitor, the uniqueness. I to, right. I had to tone that down a bit, man, because uh yeah, yo. It, 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 it'd, be a, it'd be a lot of situations where I see some covers and it's just too coincidental. And I'm like, <laughs> dang, yo, like, y'all, y'all, y'all catch, y'all see it. Where do y'all see it? I don't know. So I sometimes just like to leave it alone, man. But Matt, but Power Chords, this, throughout the whole project, you're going to be saying, you're going to hear, you're going to be hearing me say self proclaimed classic because that's how I felt in my heart of how this project was going to be perceived as, yo. I, I think it was, a, it, we worked on it long enough. We worked on it for three years. I feel like it's a classic and we're paying homage to a classic silhouette, yo. So, and I'm confident that that this album is dope, super dope and probably one of the illest albums for 2024. That's just me. That's that's awesome. That's awesome, bro. And and I think, I want to ask you this too. So like, does it switch up sometimes? What, what comes first, Never Is it like, okay, this is where I'm at in life. These are the rhymes that I'm writing. Then I pick like something from my childhood. Then I go in my nostalgia. Okay, let's pay homage to Concords. Or is it a little bit uh, different? Like, okay, I want to pay homage to Concords. How am I going to do that? Then you start writing. Like, which which which, which comes first? Dang, that's, you know what? It, 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 honestly, that's a great question, yo. Uh, it actually come and kind of coincides, yo. Like, hmm. I, I can't, I can't. It's just one of the things where I, an idea comes up and I'm just like, okay. I sit with the idea. I sit with the whether the, the title of the project, and I and I see what can I, what can I do, or what can I mentally make a mental note of what can I do to represent this project, the, this title of this project. You know what I'm saying? Um, when with with Baby Jordan, how Baby Jordan came up off the fly. I was on Southern Vanguard Radio. Uh, this is like. Uh, maybe in 2019, 2018, 20, I think it was 2018. I was with Southern Vanguard uh-huh. and um, we were just talking about, I, I just mentioned Harold Minor, right? And uh, what's the name? Memphis Meeks from there, yo. Uh, he was just like, yo, you should call your next project Baby Jordan. And just from that, I was like, <laughs> yo, that's, it, it may make sense. That's yeah. what I'm going to run with, you know what I'm saying? So uh, a lot of my, projects and ideas just come out of the spur of the moment, yo. I, 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 and then sometimes I got tons of rhymes, yo. So, um, sometimes sure. I just let the music, music do, you know, do the talking first before I come up with a, a concept and just bring everything to life. 
Okay, that's and that's dope. That makes sense now because it's like you know, like I said, the the Concord is such a, a classic colorway. So it's like yeah. now you're in that mindset. Okay, now let me make a classic album, right? So yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's the dope part. Now, early on, I noticed. Uh, I think it's on the. Uh, I think you put on the November uh twenty third uh description. Yeah. I was yeah. I was reading that on the Bandcamp page and and you know again you touched on this earlier right like it mentions explicitly how today's artists feel like they have to just keep dropping songs keep dropping albums just to stay relevant right it's not even necessarily to like get to a certain goal but just to stay relevant stay in front of the people right and, you know it definitely seems like they're making that kind of microwavable music uh, uh nowadays you know the consistency might be there but the the old school you know I think the, the consistency is there, but the 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 quality and the depth to it tends to take a hit when that happens. And as a hip hop fan, you know, me and you as hip hop fans, I'm I'm sure our listener here too, as fans who really believe in those old school principles, that can kind of be it, it kind of sucks to see that. And then I understand that you're an artist who wants to change the game for good in that way, right? Like you want to show people like how 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 to really get it done. And I think I thought of your, you know, your motto, every day is game seven. Every day is game and seven, and yes. the funny, the funny thing about that, Neva, it's like you would think with a motto like that, you would be one of those people that would, you know what I'm saying? Like just be, I gotta do everything. I gotta push, right. push, push. I gotta make album, 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 single, single, single. But then it's kind of like I feel like it's the opposite though. Like every day is game seven. I right, like let me play it. Let me play this game like it's my last. Like let me give yeah. my best with what I got right now. So, Absolutely. you know, I want to know where does that patience and, and desire to be patient come from? Man, I have always been patient. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> yo, you can test the, you can talk the logic of my salads, yo. I have <laughs> never, I have, I've never, especially when it's album time. Like when it's album mode, and especially when he got all the masters. I'm just like this with everybody when. It, when the masters are turned in, I'm hitting them up. The engineer, I'm like, yo, how does it sound? Like, <laughs> like, what you think about this record? Like, I'm, 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 I'm a nag, yo, because I'm putting this out to the world. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I want to make sure, like, do I got any hiccups in this joint? Do I need to go back and you know and change some things? You know, I know I get on Logic's nerves. Like, if I don't hear from him in a couple of days, because you know, of course, he's busy too, family mm -hmm. man, all that. When I don't hear from him for like a good week, I'm hitting him up like, yo, what's, 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 what's good? But that's just the artist. That's just the artistry in me. And then like sometimes like with, with this project, like before I, I, after I turned in the, the first original uh, masters, he was like, man, something's missing. He was like, yo, something's missing. I'm going to send you like four more beats. And I'm like, yo, where? <laughs> Because once I'm done sending out masters, I'm on to working on something else. Like once I turn in mm. a project, whatever I got ready, whatever I'm working on next, I'm I'm, a, I'm I start working on it. Whether it's be pinning or listening to beats, I'm already in my frame of that. So okay. with, with with this project, yo, it was a lot of um, going back and forth. It was a lot of emails, a lot of threads, a lot of <laughs> uh, differences. You know what I'm saying? But um. Yo, that brother's incredible. Elijah Marsalis is incredible, man. One of the dopest producers I know. I got the privilege to work with, man. And he he kept me on point. He kept me patient. He kept me patient. He kept me just like, you know, trusting his uh his his word and trust trusting his judgment, man. And uh, that's a good dude, man. So um, yeah, I, I'm just again, I'm just excited for y'all to hear this joint, man, for real. Yeah, you know, I think that's the importance of of partnering up with people who have the same vision as you, right? Like clearly yeah. that that's a guy, you know, in Logic Marsalis who, who, who y'all's, y'all's uh, values and visions line up. And so right. even when you have those differences, like you said, it's going to be easier to kind of still move mm -hmm. in, in, in step by step towards the same goal. Right. So right. I like Absolutely. that. I like that you mentioned that. Absolutely. Right. As a fan of Hip to the Games, not only should you show your love for the podcast, but you got to express your love for basketball and hip hop. With a wide variety of clothing and accessories, there is always a way to show how much the game of basketball and the game of rap means to you. Let everybody know what it means to be Hip to the Games by clicking the link in the episode's description to cop some merch and represent the H2DG lifestyle. Uh, so let's 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 get right into Concords. Uh, so, okay. you know, obviously, you know, we know the shoe. Right. But, you know, let's talk the album. You know what I'm saying? So can you give a synopsis of, of what our listener here might expect 
uh, or what you want them to expect when they hear the album? Oh, of course, it's going to be some rapping. You no, know, it's going to be a lot of rapping. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of rapping. And, and in this project, I, I got in, um, I got a, a bit personal. You know, a lot of things have changed since this album, like in the process of this album. You know, I got married. Um, you know, I, I seen things. I uh, as, as far as like within like musically, like I seen things of uh, I've experienced things as far as just learning about um, what things you gotta look out for as an independent artist and uh, how certain 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 individuals uh, try to scam you whether it be with journalists like journalists there's like i learned there was there's like during covid yo there was a time where people that was faking as like a journalist that wrote for like fader fader or you know all these top magazines right yeah they would reach out to artists that was like hungry whatever go to the algorithm and just you know basically prey on the artist like look i can get you this type of look, wow. yada, yada, yada. Yo, yeah. real, real stuff, yo. And, and I, sp I speak on that. I speak on situations as far as like uh, having uh, a vinyl deal and having the deal pulled because the distributor, the, the distributor uh, felt like I, I couldn't sell enough records. Like stuff like wow. that. Yeah, yo, wow. like I, I touch on a lot. I touch on like my beginnings, my humble beginnings of you know, uh, my first time in New York was a 106 in Park Freestyle Friday audition. Like, that was my first time ever going to New York. And me just conquering my uh, goals as an MC. That's how bad I, I wanted it, yo. So, but it, it's a lot of uh, dope concepts, too, man. Um, yeah, man. Uh, just just very different as far as, like, sound. Um, it's still boom bap. Drums still knocking. Sample heavy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I just hope that uh, listeners appreciate this, man. And I felt like Logic told me this. Logic said this is like like the best. He said this is like the best rapping he's heard from me. Wow. I don't know if he was gassing me, but he was like, <laughs> yo, this is this is like the best. This is the best I've heard you rap. And I do a lot of rapping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Like, you yeah. Know, I, you know, I guess I can't blame him with that, Never. I don't know. You know, something must be in the water because because. I don't know. I, I feel like I've, I'm getting similar feelings. Like, I just feel like there's a fresher energy to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not that not that anything wasn't fresh before, but just, Where? I don't know. I feel like you come in with something that that's, you know, you're ready to shake the table. Again, it's it's kind of testament, right? Like I said, you've just had this forward momentum. You know, being on Hot 97, it, it, I feel like it's kind of a uh, result of that as well, right? It, it yeah, maybe yeah. might even be a signpost of what's to come. Yeah, man. Uh like again, I'm 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 grateful, and and the the work is never done, yo. Like I, you know, I always try to uh stay on point as far as like sharpening my sword as a as an MC, man. That's why uh, I've been doing the Ninth Wonder joints too, right? Like every night, every night, and that and that right there, that's just me having fun with rap because I love to rap. Like I, it makes me happy. People forget <laughs> you know that I mean? too. People yeah, forget re that. Regardless, regardless of like the money that I get from it genuinely i love rapping like it <laughs> makes me happy man like to the point where i'm like such a nerd that i'm always you know trying to figure out different ways to bend words and you know saying Absolutely. do patterns and stuff like that yo so i was telling my wife the other day i said the moment it it, it gets to feel like it's a chore you know, or it feels like a job I'm, I'm i'm out of it you know what i'm saying and right. um i remember when i was battle rapping i was battling heavy uh, the joint, it started feeling like a job, yo. Like once like the politics and the red tape started coming in the mix with things and it just started not becoming fun anymore. Like it was like, okay, this is your opponent. This is what you have to do. Bong, bong, bong. You do, it just started, it didn't, it, it lost that that feel of a spontaneous and lost that feel of like just the ex excitement, at least to me. So, you know, mm -hmm. that was the reason why I chilled from battle rap for a while and I don't think I'll ever battle rap again, yo, because just it just I it had its moment and I was glad that when that moment happened, I was a part of that. Yeah. I feel you. Mm -hmm. I feel you. Yeah. So uh I want to talk about the cover art too though, uh never. Because you know, two part question here. You might you might know what I'm about to ask, but but we'll see. Cause my thing is like <laughs> this. All right. So what you know what take take us through the cover art and, and kind of how that came to be, and then I'll see if that answers my next question. 
<laughs> oh man. Oh, yo. Oh, this is another, this is another uh <laughs> yo, this is another <laughs> issue as far as like remember we was talking about the patients. Yeah. The patients yeah. Are that. <laughs> like so so this one was oh my goodness. It was a hassle, yo. Um really? we went through yeah, like the to, to get the cover art right. And that that's a that's the thing that me and Logic we take pride on. You know what I'm saying? Like we take pride on, and you gotta pay. You gotta if you want some good, like something that's, that's representing you, you gotta pay, man. Like you gotta pay. And that's why like every person that we reach out to to um contribute and and do some some art for us. You know, we know it's a price, but we 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 know the the work they they come with. You know what I'm saying? Like Bernard with the uh, with Dustin Grime. You know what I'm saying? We we knew he's a good. He's from Frederick, man. He's like out, out like literally my neighbor or whatever. But um, but yeah, we we knew we had to like actually you know call, call come up with some some bread for that. But we knew what we was getting. Right. So you um, know he's gonna come through for you. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to uh so Log Logic actually uh told me about Kai Tech. Shout out to Kai Tech, man. I, I think he's from New York, whatever, but he's done a lot of artwork for Vic Spencer, you old Drew, uh God mm. Fahim. Yeah, his his Instagram is crazy, yo. And um do a, a real good dude. Like, but yo, he was a hard dude to get in touch with. Like he was a <laughs> He was and and now and, and it was to a point where we was in crunch time, like we was in crunch mode. This is like last year. We was in like album mode. We was almost finished. And I think it was like ninety percent almost finished with the project. So mm -hmm. now we're we're here, you know, trying to hunt down, uh, you know, artists to do our, our album work. And Logic was like, man, he said, if it ain't Kai Tech, I don't want nobody else to do it. Like he was, mm. he 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 stood on that. Yeah. Like he stood, I'm sitting here like, and I and I had to be the one that was reaching out. Like I was the I was the guy that had to reach out, like to contact, you know, send out, you know, a, just a genuine a relationship. And he was a good dude, like a real. When, when I finally got a hold of him, uh, he's just so busy with the art, with his artwork, you know. Like he actually, that's his like career is Makes doing sense. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he was just like telling me, he's like, yo, man, don't, I, I apologize. I, I got a lot going on and I just appreciate him responding. But the the fact I wasn't expecting was him to be on board of uh, doing the artwork. And it, it was like, he took his time, man. It was, I, I say it was a, I say it was like a four month process for him to do that cover for us. Mm. And he did that. He did it with a, a ballpoint pen. Everything that's on that cover was with a ballpoint pen. Wow, that's cool. I because I like the way it looks, you know. But I, yeah. I, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have guessed that. That's dope. He did though. the whole so the whole joint with a ballpoint pen, man, which is amazing to me, man. And uh, I was, I was when, when Logic seen it, it was like he was sold. I was like, bro, it, <laughs> I it, bet you, know, you know. What I was like, <laughs> bro, that was the main thing I wanted to because you know, of course, when you I come from that era when you look at the cover art that's going to convince people, oh yeah, I want to see what this is about. That's the same way with, um, you know, producers that pick up records for sample. They see a record, the ambiance of the record might be like, a, like look like a, something from a black exploitation film. Like, yo, that shit, like, they got some shit on it. You know what I mean? So that's, that's the main thing when um, we put our records the cover got to speak for itself, yo. The music, we already know the music is gonna be dope. We already know, right? But Dick and Harry don't know that, so right. that, that's, that's the why, first thing they gonna see. If if somebody don't yeah, know you, that's the first thing yeah. they see. So yeah. that's why every even with the Ghost of Reggie Lewis, that's why you know Squad Dead Face, yo, man from Australia. That's why I was like, yo, every artist, every everybody has to. It has to be on point, yo. The artwork has to speak, yo. Mm -hmm. That's like, and I've gotten people who've reached out to me and be like, yo, I didn't even know what this was. I just listened to it off the strength of the artwork. And that 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 really helps, man. Like the artwork is important, yo. And I was so excited. Like Logic had to tell me to chill. He was like, yo, you gotta chill. No, no, I don't want you to share. I was so <laughs> excited. I wanted to share, because it was so good. I wanted to share the artwork with everybody, yo. And Logic, he had a full beer. He said, yo, chill, chill. That's how, and, and like, once I, 
once I lose that feeling, like once I lose that feeling, I don't want it no more, yo. Like I yeah. still get excited about wanting to share art with people and just covering how dope the music is, yo. Once I lose that feeling, I know I'm not. I don't want to rap anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I get that. It's it's dope. It's kind of like you said. It's kind of it's kind of funny to hear how your patience thing kind of came up again with that. But you know, I can't yeah, blame yeah. you, never. I can't blame you, yeah, bro. You <laughs> see that? Will people see that artwork, yo? Who haven't seen it yet? That's like crazy, man. Like, yeah. Yes, and okay. So let me ask this then: uh, Why, why uh, Georgetown AI and not uh, MJ? Because a lot of people forgot that. Alan Iverson was wearing the Concords. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And it was, and I we we didn't want it to be too cliche. Gotcha. Everybody knows that, like everybody knows Jordan wore Concords. You know what I'm saying? That was the main thing. I was that that like when we decided the album cover, I said, yo, we are not using Michael Jordan. <laughs> like that was the first thing I said, yo, we're not using Michael Jordan for the cover. Like, I love that. Nah. I love that. We're going to use Alan Iverson. <laughs> From when he played the Georgetown Hoyos and that that artwork, it, we play, he, he's playing the Terrapins, so that's crazy. Maryland Terrapins, yeah. so it's, it's 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 wild, man. But uh, and honestly, I I I think the Concords, the way uh, obviously the way he laid it out, the way he had them on, yo, it just I don't know, just the way his flavor of you know how Al Iverson is, just the way he 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 put them joints on and played in them, yo. It just it was only right, man. And that's one thing we were just we was fighting with uh for a long time as far as the process of dropping these singles. We were like, yo, do we wanna, especially on streaming, do we wanna use Concords? Do we wanna use Michael Jordan playing in Concords? Or that's why when you go on the streaming website, we use we use for every single it was a different player. It was Jordan, but it was a close-up version of the Concord. And then the next one was Iverson wearing a Concord, but it was a close-up. Of him wearing the car, of course. You know what right. I mean? So yeah. Yeah, that's dope. And that's even like you said, like mentioning the the fact that he was playing Maryland, like that, like again, that crazy connection, like that. You yes, y'all probably crazy. didn't even think of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was like, oh, you playing the therapist in this picture? I'm like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> it's like meant to be at that point. Yeah. Right. right I, I love right. when it connect when the idea goes deeper. I oh, love yeah. That. Absolutely. The 2023-24 NBA season is here, and there's no better time to cop the flyest and authentic merch to rep your squad. If you're looking for the ultimate destination for NBA gear to rep the home team, look no further than the NBA store. With an extensive selection of authentic and high-quality products like jerseys, hats, and accessories, the NBA store has everything you need to express yourself. Word to NWA. And with an online presence, it becomes even easier to shop from anywhere in the world. Don't miss out on the latest trends and experiences. Visit the NBA store today by clicking the affiliate link in this episode's description. Hip to the Games is working in affiliation with the NBA store and will be compensated for your patronage by utilizing the link provided. I sincerely thank you for all your support. At the time of this episode, at least, you know, people may or may not have listened to the full album yet. Right. Um, but you did give us some some smooth singles in November 23rd and Amazing Hallelujah. And so, you know, I want to talk about these singles as kind of like an appetizer to the album because, okay. yeah. you know, and, and first I want to talk to about uh, November 23rd because, you know, my immediate question was this. Uh, what What's so special about that date for you? What's so special about November 23rd for that to be the title? Because, you know, I, I tried to do some research and I'm seeing like, OK, uh, the original Concord release date was November, I believe November 10th, 1995. So did you like combine November and then 23 because it was Jordan shoe? Or is this like an actual date in your life that like you have sentimental value with? So November 23rd, man, and I, I, I did my research too, yo. Yeah. Um I kind of I I, I might have gotten the dates mixed up because you are right, November 10th, 1995. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? But uh but basically when I when I did this record I, I wanted to do a record that uh resembled and pay homage to one of the sneaker releases. And that okay. sneaker, when that sneaker came out, it came out in November, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, I just added the 23rd for paying homage to Jordan. You know, got you. Okay. So, but okay. but definitely because because me and Logic, we was talking about that too. Like it was like it was it was it was 95. It was in 95, it was on a 10th, yo. But we just ran with it. We it was just it, it sounded it was so dope, but we just we just ran with it, man. 
Yeah, that's dope. Okay, I figured that too because I and I know a lot of times, man, you you look back on some of the and not just shoes, but like albums, singles. Yeah. Sometimes there's a lot of like mixed stuff, you know, with the albums. Like you you might find something where it's like a lot of sources might say this date, but then you might find like some deep archive and it's like, nah, it couldn't have dropped that date because they had the release party on this date. Yeah, and that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely. Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> nah, you good. You good, yo. Yeah, but so so I like that combination there. Now, in the music video of this song, uh, mm. you can't help but notice the MF Doom mural in the background, right? Like, I know you never, I know that was definitely intentional. Um, and, you know, I couldn't help, it, it's something poetic about that, because I couldn't help but hear some of the same similarities in his style with your style on that song specifically. Yeah. Um, can you kind of talk about, and while I know you have many influences, can you talk a little bit about how much the MF Doom uh, influence was was in this song, or at least in this album, even if you want to go that deep? So um, when we was uh, scouting locations, excuse me, when we were scouting locations for this music video, um, I would always constantly see that Doom mural on my way to work. I mm. always see it, and I'm like, yo, I don't think, Nobody, because the 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 side of Baltimore where I stay on is it's in the art district. Like the the part the part I actually frequent at is the art district of Baltimore, okay. and you there's graf graffiti everywhere. Uh, this place called Graffiti Alley. If you come to Baltimore, you go to Graffiti Alley. That's where like the dopest murals you're gonna find. But it's that's just the, a lot a lot of pieces that scattered around. Um, in that in that radius of you know like four to six block radius, you know what I'm saying? They're just just on builders, just random artwork, yo. And when I seen that, I didn't think anybody was tapped in like that. Like that was the thing that caught my me off guard was you don't hear too many people from Baltimore that talk about Doom like that. Mm -hmm. Like me, I, I've been a I've been a Doom head ever since I left from California. So um it was always that uh that awkward uh, appearance where you know you be around a lot of people and they you know cats is talking about hip hop and you bring up doom and this cats like uh oh, we never oh, heard of that dude you know yeah, what I'm saying like yeah. it, it, I've, it's it's always been like that since day one yo so when I seen that mural I was like oh yo this is a no brainer and it kind of reminds me the sample it it kind of reminds me off of something I, I it, you it could have. The song could have been on mm -mm food. Yeah, that's like, what I thought. That's yeah, what I thought. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like the song, <laughs> the sample that Elijah used, which like it, it reminded me of something that possibly could have been on mm -mm food or Operation Doomsday. Just the way the the, the sample sounded. But uh, I was right. just so grateful to 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 actually. Uh, there was nobody around. We 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 just we we had it planned. We had a plan for a time. This is what it was. And we get there, and there was nobody around, and we just <laughs> did that joint in like an hour or two, man. Shout out to Scott Williams, man, and um, For he sure. already he told me he was like, "Yo, yeah, this video is like." He's like, "Yo, this shit's gonna be dope, yo." It was straight to the point, and he was like, "Yo, I miss doing videos where Cassius are just rapping." He was like, "It's not, yeah. not enough for that right now, man. Cass is just rhyming." I'm like, "Man, that's what's up, man." And it's been being well received, yo. A lot of people are, are, are liking the the record, especially the visuals too. Yeah, for sure. I, I the same thing struck me too. I'm like, you know, there's is it's not too many cuts or anything like that. Like, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with like a, a cinematic music video, yeah, music video, right? Absolutely. But there's also like the fact you get just get straight to the point is really in just that one location with with multiple angles. Like, you know, it don't it don't it don't get more raw than that. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so why was November twenty third the why was that fitting as the lead single for Concord? It just felt good. Like it, it just, it just, it just really felt good, man. Um, and I, I wanted to showcase the listeners' logic's pr production because a lot of people is, is so used to him with um, drums and chopped up samples, but this was just a, a loop. Like this was just a, a, a regular loop with some light drums, yo. And I, I really wanted to showcase uh, Logic's production skills, man. And uh, again, it just it just felt good. And that was just one of the first records that I actually recorded for Concords, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. So did you know then when you recorded it, like, oh yeah, this got to be the single? Did you know right then? Um, yes and no. Yes okay. and no. Because <laughs> like now, me and him, we're having conversations like, 
after Amazing Hallelujah, we was like, oh, this should be the next single. This should be it. like it's just that's how it's always it's always like that after you finish a project, yo. You got because everything sounds good. Right. Right. Yeah. And and speaking of Amazing Hallelujah, of course, that being the second single, uh, talk yeah. about the inspiration behind this as well. Uh now, uh talk about the song, but also the cover art, because you know, I love how you paid uh, homage to Moses Malone on that joint too. Man, the funny, the funny aspect. I'm gonna give you a a, a secret. It's funny. <laughs> a lot of our when we like me and Logic, we we don't do nothing. Everything is planned, but it's not planned. We do stuff like at last minute. Like we kind of have that like South Park syndrome, where like like <laughs> South Park the way they do it, they do an episode the week before it airs. Like that, like that's okay. how they create the episode the week of. So yeah. when we was doing Amazing Hallelujah, I remember I was at work. And we were just trying to figure out uh, what we're going to do for the for the artwork and like what we're going to do for the artwork. So we're sending each other like stuff as far as like what can we do to mixing basketball with, you know, quote unquote religion, whatever. Like we were just trying to like just figure it out. We came across a, 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 some dope, dope artwork, man. But just with that one, I, I just remember Moses Malone doing a Nike ad. I don't know what how that struck struck me in my mind. But that was one of the things I remember was, oh, damn, I remember Moses Malone did a Nike ad for Nike where he was holding the staff and right. he was part, part in the seas, you know what I'm saying, with basketballs on. I was so, about to say, the bat, so, rain in basketballs, like, that was yeah, fire. Yeah, when <laughs> seen that, he was like, yo, how did you know about this? I said, I don't know. It just it just came to me. Like, I, I, <laughs> like literally just came to me. And Amazing Hallelujah, that was the original song. Like, that was the original. That was that's when he sent me the beat. That's what it was called. Oh, nice. I didn't change it. Nice. It was just like, he sent it to me. It was like Amazing Hallelujah. And I heard it. I was like, yo, I do not want to change the the title of this joint, yo, because it, it just speaks for itself. And um, basically fine. giving praise to being able to to create. That's, that's, the, that's the whole purpose of the song is just giving praise and allowing to be creative you know what i'm saying whether you're a singer artist rapper movie director podcaster just giving y'all the praise to just create man and um uh, when we heard that song when when logic hit me up and he was like he was like bro he's like i listened to this song like 75 times man like this might be the one this might be the one i was like word he said yo this song is really good and everybody i played it for people you know really enjoyed the record man yeah, man, that's that's dope because I I got the same feelings too. I was like, even when I was listening to it multiple times, I'm and I'm like, yeah. yo, like I I sense a theme of gratitude with this, and I think that's yeah. like really dope because obviously it's gonna be like this this hard hitting like rhymes and everything, but I'm like the fact that you can get the the personal sense of, of gratitude and stuff mm -hmm. like that it, it, that like that's what got me, bro. Because uh, and it even reminded me like the first time I heard uh, Wale's uh, Golden Salvation, I got the same vibes when oh, I nice. heard Amazing Hallelujah, the same vibes when I heard that song in, in 2013. So I was that's like, dope. yo, like this is really dope. This is really dope. Thank you, man. Word for sure, for sure. And then of course, I mean. We got to show mad love, man, that the fact that this was featured on Real Late with Peter Rosenberg on Hot 97. Man, like, man, never, shout out to Rosenberg, and, and man. two times, right? You said two times right, in twice, like two weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah two weeks. So he played the, he played the joint, or he ran it back, back to back. And it's it's uh, funny as, as artists, you're always in your head. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm always in my head, man, because uh, you, you want to be the you want to present to people with the best possible product, you know what I'm saying? So you're always tough on yourself when you re when you release it, you're like, okay, see how it does. Yeah. And then you just wait in and um, th the, the best moments are the moments where you don't expect it. Very like true. those are the illest moments. Like when, when you, you were expecting it to happen, and you know, you know, you, you talk to somebody, you're like, okay, yeah, we're gonna get this spine on such and such day off. We got you. But when it just hits you and you had no idea, no, no clue, like all I did was just sent out an email. That was it. He could have oh, passed wow. up on it. Yeah, right. like that was it. He could he could have passed up on it, you know what I'm saying? But the fact that uh he he took his took the time to listen to the record and play it and put it in rotation as a world premiere exclusive 
that that was dope. And then to see that I was amongst, you know, Conway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Prime Apple. I was on the same playlist as these illustrious artists, you know, that I, all, 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 all I could do was just be thankful and be grateful and just to keep, just, just to know that my work as an MC is not done, man. And that was a, a little bit proof. And I also learned that um, everybody is different. Everybody's ears is different, yo. Uh -huh. Like, I, I can't expect for Stag Selector or a Primo to feel the same way about a record as Peter Rosenberg did. And nice. vice versa. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's the one thing that I'm I'm starting to learn as an artist is that not everybody is going to feel a record. Like, not every... And, and, and it may not be because the record ain't hot or the record right. ain't dope. It just means that maybe when you sent that record and however many other records they received, it didn't fit in that pocket of the mix. Yeah, yeah. So that that's happened too. You know, like sometimes I'm at a point now where I, I when I have a new record and I'm about to you know try to promote it, I put it out there and I let God handle it. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? You got like, to. You got to let, at that just, point. You, you did what it. you could. Yeah, I did what I could. And I, you can't persuade everybody's ears, yo, because everybody's ears is different. Uh, I clearly understood that everybody's ears is different with a basic hallelujah because <laughs> man, I noticed like certain certain places that I've, I've been placed on wasn't spending it. And then Peter Rose's first, man, I said, hold up, man. Like everybody <laughs> is different. Like certain, like certain people that I was like, yo. I'm banking on this record being put on here. Like I'm banking on it. Like I can just feel it. And then you, you look at the playlist, you're like, dang, it's not on there. Like, what? <laughs> but then you see Peter Rosenberg play, you like, man, I don't know. Like at this point, it's just I, I'm just starting to learn that everybody's ears is is different, man. For real. Yeah, man. But but that was really inspiring to see, man. When you posted that, I was like, no way, man. Cause dang, when, thanks, when you man. were right here, when you were right here in 2021 and you know at that time we were we was we was uh we was hyped because you you was on uh shade four or five yeah now, you were on hot 97 and even like i've all that's what you always said following you over the last couple of years you always said like no i'm trying i'm trying to get my joints on hot 97 and obviously yeah. there's there's other branches within hot 97 right like it's not just peter rosenberg show but the fact that you got this on there, I was like, that's like a dope reminder to stay the course. It's kind of what you were saying too. Like, yeah. you know, when you keep just putting in the work and keep doing your thing, like there, you're going to have your hard days. But then when you do get that moment, it's kind of like that breath of fresh air. Like, wow. Like it is Man. paying off. Like, yeah, it yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was definitely like when I got the news, yo, uh, my wife was at work and I was like, dang, yo, I ain't got nobody to share this moment with me. It, it was just me. <laughs> Like it was just me in the crib by myself. I'm like, yo, just screaming at the top of my lungs, like, yo. And <clears throat> like we did it. And then I just put a battery on my back, yo. Like, I already told, yeah. I already told Peter Rosenberg, yo, dog, if you give me the opp yo, the moment he, he gives me the opportunity to come up there or real late, the flex, I'm showing off, yo. I'm showing off, yo. Like that Absolutely. goes for that goes for that. That goes, I got my eye on Sway in the morning. I got mm -hmm. my eye on Stack Selector. Like, and then, you know, a lot of people would be like, yo, there's, those are just good looks. So, yeah, they're, they're great looks. But nah, I need to let these cats know that I can rhyme, yo. I, I, I get, I get busy, yo. That's, that's, sure. that, that's where I'm at. And my goal, I feel like my goal ain't complete, yo. Yeah. Y'all need to hear that I'm nice, yo. Like, straight up. For sure. For sure. I'm right with you, bro. I'm right with you. And, you know, my follow up question to that is, uh, how do you how do you maintain that forward momentum towards your dreams? I think we did kind of touch on this in the beginning, but like you know, because I'm I'm sure you know, right? Like people love to say congrats when the, when the dream is realized, but they miss those days in between. You know, they they don't see those pages of rhymes like I was saying earlier. They don't see the shots in the gym, right? They don't they don't mm -hmm. see the after the after work stuff, the the verses, practicing verses, studio time you know, fighting the self-doubt, et cetera. Like, how have you been able to find that drive to keep at it, you know, even if the results don't really look like what you imagined initially? You know, you know, Daz, what's, what's so funny is as artists, 
we're always greedy, yo. Like we're we're <laughs> always greedy. Like like yo, just mentioning, I was just played on Hot ninety seven, right? Mm -hmm. Even though it was a dope win, but I'm not satisfied. Like, like that, yeah. that 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 like that I that's the crazy thing. Like because I know people that would kill to get their music played on on Hot ninety seven, right? Right. But even though I was privileged enough to to get my music on there, yo, I still I, I still want to be on uh Sway in the Morning. I still want to be on uh freaking uh Top Shelf Premium. I still want to be on uh uh Punchline Academy. Like all these are luxuries, I still because nah, this this ain't this, it ain't done yet. Right. Like, yeah, that was cool, that was dope. I appreciate it, but nah, like I ain't I'm not done. And I think that's what the that's where the drive comes from, man. Cause it's still it's still that competitive, competitive nature. Now I'm not I'm not competing with uh other MCs, well, which I am, but for me, I'm I'm competing with myself. Like mm -hmm. as a, as an artist, like I'm competing with myself. Like, what can I do next? Like just to keep that that pin going, you know what I'm saying? And uh, again, it, and it's about having fun too, man. Like, I, like the moment does the moment I I stop, like the moment it starts not feeling fun or I just not in the mood to write anymore, then I I know it's time to hang it up, you know, because I'm always in the in the mood to write, yo. I'm always in. It's just just I just have that drive to also um, present a project because it's like I don't have nobody. Like I don't have a publicist. I don't have a management. I don't have I don't have nothing. So of course. I got to, me and Logic or whoever I'm working with, we both got to do direct work when we're pushing a project after it's done. And yeah. that that's always, it, it could be discouraging too, but it's also, it's fun because when certain results happen, you'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, we did that. We did that. Yeah, I was going to say, that's what, that's, again, that's the thing I stress on the most, man. Like when, I, I want people to see like, again, whether you were independent artist, independent podcast or whatever, like you you are your team. Like, and that's not right. just like say it in a selfish way, right? Like you said, you do got your support system. You do got the people you work with, your producers, all that stuff. Right. But at the same time, you, you are really moving with like your ideas, your mm -hmm. pen, your everything. And so it can be so much more fulfilling when you do reach those goals. And then it's like, okay, I'm on high 97 with Peter Rosenberg. Like, I know I'm I'm gonna get on sway eventually, right? Yeah, I'm gonna get on yeah, that, that, eventually. That, that's where you know? it's at. Yeah, 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 that's where it's at. That's 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 where that uh that that drive comes from. And it's like now I wouldn't say it's pressure, but you gotta keep that momentum going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta keep that momentum going because you know, again, just you know, going back to talking about how Pats is uh releasing eight projects a year, and I I, I get it now. I get it because all right, you got this momentum. You guys keep keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. But uh I feel like the the pace that I'm I'm at right now is is pretty cool, man. As long as I, you know, stay active, you know, doing shows or whatever the case may be, man, doing verses for people who like, yeah. Eventually cats will carry along. Cause when cats will catch on, but when you're thinking cats ain't looking at you, they're looking at you, man. They might they may be doing it in, in silence. But they're looking at you, y'all. Yeah, or for real. They are. Yeah. I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. And, you know, flipping back to the music, too, like, again, we it'd be remiss if we didn't give a shout out to uh, Logic Marsalis. Because, I mean, yeah. again, man, like at the time, again, at the time of this recording, just going by the singles, like I can already tell all them beats is heavenly. Like that's the only word that was coming to mind. Not even just because of Amazing Hallelujah. Right. With, with, with the wordplay with that. But just like th that's what kept coming to mind. These beats are heavenly. And, yeah. and you know, what what makes y'all such a cohesive dynamic duo uh you know obviously like i know the last project like you said y'all did was 2019 but like y'all have done songs all throughout so like what makes right. y'all such a dynamic duo and like what is it about his sound and his style that draws you in as a songwriter man yo that first and foremost that's that's my brother and uh mm -hmm. that's a, a good dude i've known him oh man since 2000 and uh, thing eight man since 20 yeah 2008 y'all i've known that brother That's and cool. uh his sound has always been consistent he's always elevating he's always working with he, he, he's a he's another one that's like always he's a student of the of the game he's always trying to learn more and just figure stuff out like uh 
Yeah, yo, Logic, he's just he's he's just a monster, man. He's he's a monster, and he's like one of the most consistent producers that I've known. That he got tons of stuff that nobody has heard wow. before at wow. all, yo. Like I can tell you, he got beat tapes that is just, and I don't know if he slowed down or whatever, but yeah, he is just one of the most consistent dudes that is um really talented that he doesn't get that that them flowers yo and i think what makes me and him work so well that together is we gotta know his i know his sound you know what i'm saying and i, and I know when i when i Max. get something from logic oh yo i know it's about to be some heat there, there's nine times out of ten there's probably when you send me beat packs if you send me like like eight beats there'll probably be like two i'm not feeling okay. the rest is heat you know what i'm saying <laughs> and sometimes he always does this, yo. Whenever I'm about to finish a project, he'll always hit me up like, yo, 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 don't, 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 don't finish that. I, I got like four more. I need you to rap on real quick. <laughs> like that's what he did. Like when I was afraid of like turn out turning the project to get it mastered, he hit me up. Was like, yo, I got like these four beats. I had you in mind, yo. Just, just, just check them out. Like, oh my god, that's, that's dope. That's dope. And I can't. The one thing is, I, I can't say no. I, I can't be like, nah. I, ain't, I gotta at least check them out, yo. But. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what keeps the the competitive nature going, man. Uh, I just want that dude to to do uh, to put out more more beat tapes. He can rap too. I want him to do some some rapping Word. over time. It's pretty yeah, yo. The dude, a lot of my sounds is dope, man. Yeah. So so is it safe to say he brings out the best in you? You know. Yeah, cause he's yeah. yo he's he's quick to tell me like nah, that ain't it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he's quick. Like he's you need, quick you need to them tell. folks. <laughs> Yo, he's so quick to tell me, like, nah, that ain't that ain't it, bro. <laughs> and, th and this is the first project when we did uh Dust and Grime. Mm -hmm. I, I I would travel to Norfolk, Virginia from Baltimore. I would take that Greyhound and it'd be like a six hour bus trip to to you know chill with him for like you know three days and knock out joints when that's when we did Dustin. This mm -hmm. one, by us being so busy, um, he would just send packs. And I, I would record down, uh, uh, shout out to Brandon. I would record at the lineup room downtown Baltimore, man. And uh, yeah, we just did it like that. And you you hear a lot of stories about like people emailing, you know, back and forth. And that doesn't come up with the best music, whatever. But yeah, I think we did perfectly with this show. If he wasn't feeling something or there was a certain sound in the instrumental that I wasn't feeling, I would email him. He would respond and he would tell me like how this sound. And it, it just worked out that way, man. We got, uh, I mean, we got 13 records on this on this project, yo. 13. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So, how how important is it that rappers have a producer? L let me rephrase. Uh, <laughs> how important <laughs> is it that MCs uh, have a producer that br that brings out the best in them? Because you know, maybe not everybody everybody might not have somebody they they tight with for that many years, you know. Right, but you know what? It it, it takes um uh, a dope individual, whether it be an MC or producer. It takes a dope and honest individual to just tell someone that like, yo, you could do better, mm -hmm. or no, that's whack. And you don't have a lot of that, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not just saying that just because I was I'm fortunate enough to have Logic as a as a as a friend. Like, I could I could call outside of music, you know what I'm saying? But Sometimes you need those people that are in, in tune with the music. And if they ain't feeling it, man, you need those people to be like, yo, that, that's, that's whack. You might have to change it up a little bit. You know, uh, you, you just need that honesty, man. And I, I feel more importantly, you need a cohesive sound. Like, that's just, that's just me, man. Like, one of these days, I, I want to do a project with, like, six and seven different producers. You know what I mean? I ain't ready for it yet. <laughs> but I just, I, I just, I just enjoy working with one producer, so we could both be on the same page and have a cohesive sound. You Makes know, sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, last few questions, Neva. Um, was there anything throughout the process of this album that you learned about yourself, or maybe even something that might have challenged you along the way? Just really anything that stood out as you were creating the Concords? Um, being personal, being being personal. Um, this uh, there were certain records that I was doing that took me like two weeks to write. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just due to the fact it was so it was so personal, 
that I wanted to actually, you know, I wanted to touch on. I just want to make sure I wasn't missing anything. You know what right. I'm saying? Uh, there was a few records that I wanted to do that didn't make the album uh, because due to the fact that uh, it was a bit too personal and okay. some of them was, uh, I couldn't get through it. Like I, 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 I did a rough version of it and I just couldn't get through it because of how sentimental it meant to me. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. uh, I could speak on it. I had a close friend. He, he, was, he made beats. A good producer named The God Knowledge. Uh, we did a couple albums um, way back when I moved to Baltimore. He passed away. Uh, this is in twenty. I think he, I think he passed away in twenty nineteen. Twenty. I think it was twenty twenty. Twenty nineteen or twenty twenty. He passed away, and that that really like got me. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. he was one of the producers that like he was one of the ones, yo. And not only was he a good friend, he was an incredible musician, and. Uh, you know, I spoke on that too, but just the the aspect of how fresh it was. Like when I did the record, I was like, yo, I just can't. You know, you're reciting stuff and you saying some real, you're like, yo, I can't go through it and whatever. <laughs> I can't yeah. go through it. So maybe I may spend a block, you know, and, and, and finish this project, finish that song for, for this for another time. But when I did that record, I was like, yeah, I can't do this. I can't put this on the album, man. It's just too much. It's too much, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, that was that was that was probably some of the biggest challenges um, when doing this record. Yeah, but now is that is that something like you kind of always struggled with in the past? Was like being personal, or like you know when you say be personal, like kind of like to what what effect? Oh, uh, being personal, like uh, just like just talking about some of the, just just your personal stuff that you you have been through. Uh -huh. Whether it been you know a death in the family, or whether it been something that you went through, uh, in the music industry, like stuff like that that oh, people right. don't like like to touch on, and I, and I feel like when you do those type of records, you gotta take your time. Mm -hmm. You have to take your time because you know everybody can rap all day. You know you can do different techniques and, and styles and all that, but being personal though, it takes a different type of individual to just sit there in your thoughts. And just like map out how you where you going to take this listener to from start Very true. You know, to finish, you know what I'm saying? Take, mm -hmm. And then it's like then the hard part is uh when you're personal, you kind of kind of like put a put aside the other aspects of rapping, like the techniques of rapping. Like but yeah, wanna, yeah, I know what you mean. Do I, do I want to do punchlines? Do I want to do you know all these different metaphorical like structures? <laughs> but now nah, sometimes, yo, I just want to. I want to get straight to the point, yo. Just just get straight to the point of how I'm feeling, why I am feeling, yo. You know, without all the extra stuff. Got you. Yeah, that make that makes sense for sure. And you know, and you can feel free to name drop, right? Like I said, I know at the time of this recording, at least, uh, the album hasn't dropped. But uh, what's a song on Concords that uh you're most proud of, how it turned out, and why? Oh, wow. Um we have a record on there. Well, that's the thing. It's a lot of records, yo. It was a lot of records. You know what? It was two. It was two records. Okay. okay. Uh, Let's hear it. The first, the first run, first one was "Never Give Up," mm -hmm. and it, it features cuts from DJ John Doe from Southern Vanguard. Shout, shout out to DJ John Doe. Um, that record um, was. I'm super proud of that record because. I was speaking on my journey, what it took for me and Elijah Moss House to get here. Like mm -hmm. the red tape that nobody sees, the, the blood, sweat, and tears, like that nobody sees, that nobody seen the, the the thoughts of me wanting to quit, like all that, like nobody sees, yo. And uh, that sounds just, like my next anthem. I'm yeah, just gonna say yeah. that right now. <laughs> Word, yo, it really <laughs> is, yo. Because nobody like er, nobody sees the 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 red tape of what artists go through is I, like with the self doubt like nobody sees that it's like they, all they see is like oh, okay this this product that we just we presented to y'all but no y'all don't see the the stress that we put on ourselves to to present this piece of work for y'all you know yeah. um then DJ John Doe he's a good brother he, he lays the cuts and just how mentally what I had in my head of how I wanted the cuts to sound he executed it 
perfectly, man. Like that's mm-hmm. probably one of my favorite records off the off the um Concords, man. And the second one is um Eastern Conference Finals. It's a posse cut. Okay. Okay. Featuring uh Iron Emperor from the Bronx. Shout out Iron. Ro- shout, shout out Iron. Shout out Iron. Uh we got Ilian Roswell, uh Jay Bird, and uh myself, yo. And that was like getting those getting those guys together. Oh, it was it was it was difficult, yo. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was difficult. Like, yo, that joint was like almost like the it was held up the project, yo. Um uh, <laughs> the person that we was waiting on. For to get to for the whole song to be completed was Jay Bird, yo. He was the last person. He almost didn't make it. He almost didn't make it, yo. He almost he like barely made it, yo. And um, uh, yeah, everybody rapped they was off on this joint, yo. Like everybody came with like the song was like the song was almost six minutes long. Oh, were are you saying like originally or like like final cut is almost oh the final long. the final cut is like like it's like five fifty. The, the, okay. The song oh, okay. Like almost six minutes long. It's a posse cut. Like everybody oh, did. Like was rapping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cass was rapping, yo. So, but just, just the, just the aspect of people of getting people together, and you know, we're not close nearby. Everybody is got Ilian. He's in L.A. Jay Bird. He's in Frederick. Iron. The Bronx. And then me. Just getting everybody just to coordinate that. I was happy that I got everybody on one accord. Everybody sent the emails. Everybody's wave files is on point, yo. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's always a dope, dope, dope joint when you collab, and especially when you, you're not collabing in the same studio. Y'all sending out files like email is so dope to me. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. So never give up in Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, yeah, okay, I like yeah, it. I like yeah. it. Now, uh, what is a line or maybe multiple lines um, that you believe stand out in this project? Oh man, yo. Oh, yo, I have, uh, yo, <laughs> the, main, the, the main line, one of the lines, yo, I, I did the Captain America, no, Captain Planet line, yo, uh, it was uh, off the song called uh, Space Jam. Okay. And uh, I, I said, uh, dang, what was the line I said, yo, I said, uh, oh, man, oh, I said, I said, catch your breath, catch your breath, I'm blue here. Captain Planet, I'm playing pool of all eight planets. So that was yeah, yeah. I said, I said, I said, oh Gosh. man, I said, hold your, I said, brace yourself, hold your, I said, brace yourself, brace your, said, oh, brace yourself, hold your breath. I'm blue hair, Captain Planet. I'm playing pool with all eight planets. Yo, That's when crazy. Logic, Logic <laughs> brought that up, I was like, yo, I, 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 I said that. Like, man, I, I said that. And then I said another line. I said, you talking to the pigs like Billy Woods. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, Billy Woods is part of the Arm & Hammer joint, yo. They got the song, that, that that one album with the pigs or the front cover and stuff like that. Yo. But yeah, <laughs> man, I, I, got, I got a lot of lines, yo, like, on, on that record. I don't even want to spoil it, yo. Like, yeah, like that's listen, dope. <laughs> it's a lot of rapping on here, Des. It's, yeah, it's I, can, I can tell. I'm like, that, that's how much love and stuff you put into it, man. Like, yo, the fact that you can't even... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's a lot of rapping on this joint, man, and it's a lot of uh, Easter eggs and you know uh, innuendos that I, I I used. Like you just you, if you're if you're a fan of this basketball ish, man, like you'll get it, mm-hmm. you'll get it, yo. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Word. Now, what themes do you believe <laughs> listeners like us can take away from Concords? Or with, as far as like what what certain songs or 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 uh, just kind of like as a whole like what what's a theme that that might stick out to uh, those of us that that's going to listen? Um, I say the theme with this project is just good music, man. Like just just good music, just 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 good music. It is, it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like everything that is uh that's that's been out. You know what I mean? And and me and you, we can attest to it. A lot of the hip hop that's being played is sounding the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I I'm not trying to toot my own horn or none of that, but I know for sure that when people hear this record, they, they're not going to compare it to, you know, what you hear constantly within the underground, within our underground community, yo. And that's what's being um that's what's being fed. That's what I'm, I'm starting to notice. Like the same 
sound of hip hop, which is is cool. It's cool, but when it comes, when it starts becoming predictable, yo, it's like uh, ah, yeah. like when it, st- it starts becoming a pre- predictable, and it's like ah, uh, nah, I think I'm I think I'm ready for, for for something else, yo. Like that's why I admire cats like uh, Black Thought and Homeboy Sandman, uh, even though they're uh, their very their lyrical prowess is just, just crazy. But their beat choices is always amazing to me, especially Homeboy Sam, man. Yo, like his projects never sound the same. And and that's the thing that I always um I aim for with whenever I'm doing a record. I don't want my record to sound the same. I I, I don't. Like no blood, no foul never didn't sound like Baby Jordan. No blood, no foul didn't sound like the ghost of Reggie Lewis. And yeah. then vice versa with, with, with Logic Marsalis. Like, it's just because the people I work with and the cohesiveness of every song that, I, of, of every song of the album that I do, yo. So that's the main thing I try to do is I try to not make my albums sound like the next one or anything I put out in the future, yo. So, and it, and it, and it actually, it challenges me too as an MC, like, you know, fitting in different pockets too, because every producer, they have a range, you know, what they consider in their ears, what they consider hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I think you, but I think you kind of answered, you know, I think you kind of answered that question too by saying like, look, there's going to be themes of ambition, persistence, uh, individuality, all those things. So I think a, a lot of us are going to be able to pull a lot of those and, and apply them to our own lives. So I think, I think that's yeah. dope. Uh, but la- last question. Uh, I mentioned earlier how the Concord 11s are one of the most iconic sneakers ever. And yes. you know, you 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 can't you can't beat that classic white and black look. Uh yeah. and as we listen to Concords, you know, we hear you call it a, a self-proclaimed classic. So talk to me, Neville. Why is Concords the album on the same level of Concords the sneaker? Um because of the 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 craftsmanship that I I I, I put into it. You know what I'm saying? If this wasn't a project that me and Logic just, you know, we just did within three days. You know what I'm saying? We took, mind you, yo, as we took three years yeah. working on this project. <laughs> three years. And that's just from writing. There's a lot of joints that I wrote, I scrapped. You know what I'm saying? that Because I felt like it didn't fit the project, yo. So, um, which which can be hard of, to do, I imagine. Yeah. We, oh, man, yeah. yo. like that, that That's like the worst thing, especially when you got punchlines that you want to use and the punchline doesn't fit in the pocket. Oh, that's the oh. worst. <laughs> that's the worst, yo. But um, but when I did this record, it, it was it was important for me to just um take my time. Mm-hmm. Like really, really, really take my really take my time with um just presenting it, man. Presenting it to the people. Um this album, I feel like it's going it's going to be one of them albums that people want to um they're going to attest to and be like yo that this is the project that uh, Elijah Marsalis um and you'll never know they they brought it you know what I'm saying even with presenting it like not only is cast is getting the the digital aspect yo mm-hmm. we're going to be having tape cassettes we're doing vinyl we're doing CDs we're doing t-shirts like we're 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 trying to bring it like actually sell it as like uh like a boutique, if you will. Like, remember mm-hmm. how I used to buy sneakers in a boutique, whatever, and you're only doing a limited run. That's how we're trying to. <laughs> that, like, that, that's how we're trying to present the project as. Like, we're trying to present gotcha. it just like that, yo. So, um, again, man, uh, I just, I, I, I'm super proud of this project. So, I, I, I can't even explain it. I, I can't wait till March out. I want these cats to hear this joint, yo, for real. Definitely, absolutely. Absolutely, man. And you know what, Neva, as that, as that brings us to the end of the episode, man, I thank you again uh, for wanting to even come on H2DG again uh, for a second yeah. time and, and, you know, share your awesome, just honest thoughts about where you're at right thank now you. musically, thank you know, you. previewing Concords. Absolutely, bro. You know, uh, as always, I like to express my gratitude, you know, like I said, that you wanted to sit down, come back, talk about it, but also just, you know, wish you well, man, on, on continued success. Uh, in, in, in an even greater project release, right? More forward momentum for you. Uh, you know, keep sharing that gift with us, man. Like for real. And we, we and we got to get on a joint 
We, if we got a spar on the joint, yo. We got to do something, <laughs> yo. Like, word. We got to do something, bro. Word. Oh, man. You know I can't pass that up. Especially, come on now. Especially with the basketball, man. You know I can't pass yeah, that we, up. We, it's only right, man. Oh, man. Folks are starting stuff with me now. But, you know, it's all. It's all. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> Um, but you know even beyond the basketball and hip-hop man like just you know the way you take pride in your work the way you take pride in the craft um the way you you make it a point to give your best like it's all exciting to see you rolling just more and more as the years go on and you know before i let you go uh you can please remind our listener here how they can support you and keep up with all your work uh man yo uh you can check out the album on magnetic.com that's m-g-n-t-k dot calm yo it takes it straight to the band camp and the straight to the music videos merch and all that also um you can follow myself and Lachimar Salas on all streaming platforms me ull and eva and no hip hop and at Lachimar Salas yo twitter uh instagram facebook we're everywhere man um and stay tuned for you know yet to come as far as like with you know upcoming merch for for concords and more shows this summer and all that. So for those that are, you know, want to tap in with me, my door is always open. I, I never shine anyone away. If you want to work, regardless, artist, singer, R&B, bar, yo, let's do it. Absolutely, for sure, for sure. All right, well, that's another episode of Hip to the Games. We got episode 81 with You'll Never Know, ready to drop his new release, Concords, out yes. right now on March 7th. Make sure you go listen to that and show my man some love. And thank you for listening to Hip to the Games. All for the love of the best combo there is. Peace out and God bless. Peace. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Hip to the Games. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit up the socials at Desmond Powell underscore and at Hip to the Games on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok so you don't miss out on the fun. And please follow or subscribe to the show and leave a review on the podcast platform you're on right now as your support is greatly appreciated.